What in the world is a housing bubble? A lot of people talk about it, but do they actually know what they're talking about? That's today's show. Let's dive into it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Investing in Real Estate show. I'm Clayton Morris, sitting fireside because it is freezing outside right now and happy to talk about real estate investing. If you're new to the channel, this is the show where we talk about buy and hold real estate. That's the vehicle that we use, but we're really talking about creating financial freedom so that you can get more of what you want in your life, which is maybe more time with your kids, more time with your family, more time to sit back and do the things that you really want to do in life, work on cars. One of our investors who works with us at Morris Invest loves to work on cars, wants more of that space in his life to be able to do that. And that is what buy and hold real estate affords you. It affords you that financial freedom, that monthly passive income that comes in. If you don't know much about me, my name is Clayton Morris, former TV guy, spent 18 years in broadcast television and started investing in real estate a number of years ago. And we started our company, Morris Invest, to help uh, hundreds of people around the world be able to buy real estate, have it done for them so they don't have to worry about it. We're able to rehab the property, place great tenants in the property, and they're able to just cash flow. So I'm intimately aware of and focusing on what's going on in the real estate market and studying the details, the ins and outs of what's happening, what's unfolding in the real estate market. Now, you've heard the term housing bubble. You've heard it thrown around over the past few years. Now, we certainly saw it happen back in 2007 and 2008 during the great housing collapse. That was certainly a bubble that was, that was finally burst. But a lot of people throw this term around, and so today's episode, I really wanted to talk about what exactly is the housing bubble, so we have some deeper understanding of it. So when someone brings this up at a cocktail party, when someone says, yeah, I don't know about that investing in real estate right now, it's probably we're sitting in the middle of a housing bubble. Ask them, do they even know what a housing bubble is? We're gonna put up some definitions here on the screen so you can really be armed with this at your next cocktail party. Well, the idea of a housing bubble is simply a run-up in housing prices. Okay, that's the first part of this, a run up in housing prices. And it's fueled by demand. Now, that's the first part of this, right? It's fueled by demand. But, and here's the real key, demand is not the reason for a housing bubble. Speculation is reason for a housing bubble. You have all of this demand, this pent up demand for single family homes, right? But then the speculators come in and the construction crews come in and they start to overbuild and they overbuild because there's this demand, so to speak. Now these speculators come in and they build way more houses than there is demand and suddenly the value of that property is not there. That's when we have a burst. So a housing bubble is one thing, right? You might be looking around your Phoenix neighborhood, suddenly seeing all of these cranes popping up and building all of these high priced condos. Well, the reason those condos popped up is because a few years ago, somebody got together, some investors got together and said, you know what, let's spend millions of dollars. We're going to build some high rise condos because we see some data that's showing that millennials are going to want to live downtown Phoenix and they're going to want to go out every night and party. Great. Let's put millions of dollars on the table. Let's get our permits approved and let's start building these suckers. Cranes pop up, buildings emerge. But that takes years to do. That's not something that happens overnight. So that's where when they think they see demand, then the speculators come in and they, they're taking, they're speculating. They're like, we think that millennials will want to buy these condos. We think, but we don't know. And that's what happened during the housing crash, right? It's what happened in Orlando. It's what happened in Miami. It's what happened in Chicago. It's what happened in New York City, San Francisco, Phoenix, Las Vegas, ground zero in Las Vegas. All of these people could get houses with no income, no jobs. They could get a mortgage because no one, was, no one was even checking to see if they had a job. Then all of these speculators said, you know what, anyone can get a friggin' house. Anybody. <laughs> Some people without a job. So all of this construction boom in this country, right? Cranes going up, apartment complexes going up. But the people couldn't afford it. Or if they could afford it, they were getting five-year adjustable rate mortgages that were collapsing under the weight of the thing. And everything just collapsed. Now, that's what a housing bubble is. When all of a sudden you're seeing this demand, speculation, and then exuberance. 
right? It's like a goal rush. So the third part of it is really exuberance. It's excitement. It's like the, you know, the California gold rush, right? Back in the 1800s. What, there's gold in them there hills? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna run out and, and, and I'm gonna move to California. I'm gonna set up camp and try to find gold. Well, who ended up making money all, during that, right? It was the people that were selling the equipment for those people to move out west. So this art, this crazy demand, this speculation, these speculators coming in, and then this exuberance, this sort of irrational exuberance about the housing market, getting super and overexcited about it. So that's the housing bubble portion of all of this. But the uh, housing bust, the, the bursting of that bubble, that's the second piece of this. So we can talk about there being a housing bubble, which I don't really see right now at all, and then we have the bust of that bubble. That's where the bursting of it, the exploding of it, that was the collapse of the housing crisis back in 2007, 2008. So what happens during a burst? Well, remember those first few things have to be in place first, right? We have to have the demand. So there's, there's a demand for housing. There's the speculation that comes in and there's the irrational exuberance about everything. The way that it bursts then is that Speculati speculation drives up the prices artificially. And the exuberance is getting the best of people. And they're looking around saying, I don't care that that house is $700,000. I want it because I know next month it's going to be worth seven fifty. dollars And the speculation is driving this irrational exuberance. Prices are being artificially inflated where there's no value. There's no intrinsic value in those properties. And that's when you have a burst. Suddenly, something shifts in the marketplace, and those people who were artificially paying more for the property than, they, than it was worth can't either, they lose their job and they can't afford it, or the bank decides that they're not going to support the value of that house anymore, and now they're completely underwater in this property. Something dramatically shifts in a neighborhood. That's when you have a burst. So you had these artificial prices increasing in Florida and all over the country during the collapse. Then you have this irrational exuberance, and then you see this bursting occurring because people then are thinking, well, you know, I just got to get into this house. It's going to go up $50,000 in six months, and that's exactly what was happening. But now the fundamentals are different. Now we have a whole video we're going to dive deeper into whether or not we're facing another housing bubble right now in 2018. Should you be concerned? We're going to look at some of the data, and I think you're going to be excited about what this data shows us. So that's going to be in another, in another video we're going to share with you. So there are two different mechanics at play. There are, that is the housing bubble itself, speculation fueled by demand, and then you have exuberance, and then you have the bursting of that bubble. And it's very different than just the bubble itself. So the bursting is what we want to be worried about. And I think you're seeing some really different things right now in our economy. We're going to dive more deeply into the housing market in 2018 right here on our channel. I thank you so much for subscribing. Please leave a comment in the thread below. I would love to know your thoughts. Are you experiencing some of this demand in your market? I know in New Jersey, we're seeing some prices kind of going through the roof, but the new tax law has started to tamp that down a little bit because you can't write off uh, you know, state and local taxes in New Jersey and some of the blue, in the blue states anymore. So some of those prices are probably going to drop in some of those uh, really richer you know, neighborhoods. That may drive all kinds of demand towards the Midwest where I like to invest in real estate. If you would like to book a call with our team and you're ready to take the plunge and become a real estate investor and pick up your first property, I'm talking like $50,000 and you're ready to make that plunge and you have the house renovated for you and a tenant placed in the property, that's what we do all day long. You can book a call with my team at Morris Invest. Just click on the link right in the description below. We'll jump on the phone for 30 minutes with you and we'll get a sense of what your goals are financially, where you want to go and where you want to create passive income in your life. I'm Clayton Morris. We'll see you next time. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. It's the number one way to build wealth in this country.